Lord, just bless them today. Bless those guys down there today. Bless all of them because I know all of them's going through something. Some of them don't even have no family. Some of them don't even, some family don't even care about them that they're there. They don't care. But I care. God cares. So I'm going to bless them, Lord. Bless them all. Bless them all. So I uh, we get to see him every fourth Sunday. We get to take him out. Justin Katie got to go with us last time. He's doing amazing. Amazing. And I'll say something to him. He's going to miss on top of that. I said, whoo, okay. Stepped on his own mama's toes there. I mean, you know, I went to say something that probably was, was gossiping a little bit. Well, let's just call it. It was. And he said, I'm going to stop talking about that. I said, okay. We won't talk about that. So anyway, he sent this letter. And I want to read it to you. And then we'll let Steve in. He says, Dear Mom, I hope this letter finds you well. After talking to you, I decided to write down some things that I hope will help you. Also, my friend Landon wrote down his testimony for you to share. I miss you guys and tell him I said hello and that God is doing a work here in Leland, North Carolina. The devil is on the run. I wrote, well, he said I wrote Scott and I want him to be encouraged. I hope he gets it. Mama, I miss y'all and I love you so very much. Love your son, Matt. And he said, P.S., if there's anything else you need, just let me know. So I'm going to read Leland, uh, Landon's testimony first. He says, Landon's testimony. My name is Landon. I'm 38 years old. Born in Jacksonville, North Carolina. I have three sisters, of which is a twin who is hearing impaired. I grew up going in and out of the system until the age of 13. I was molested for two, for over two years, telling my mother every day what was going on, but she refused to believe me. Both my parents were severe addicts. At the age of 14, I moved out of my dad's house and began my life journey. I still went to school every day, graduated with my class. I joined the military at the age of 20 and served 16 years. I married my ex-wife, Lisa, during this same time, and we have two wonderful children, Lauren, 13, and Griffin, 9. The first years were awesome, but over time, I changed through my deployments and isolated myself from my family. Then my addiction started with pain pills, which we all know where that leads. The last five years of my marriage, I stole and took everything from my family, from college funds, wedding rings, and most importantly, time. I tried to, I tried everything from counseling to rehab, and my whole family was on their knees on my behalf. In three years, I have been changed with over, I have been charged with over 40 felonies. Mm -hmm. But through the grace of God, I have never been put, sent to prison. I was placed here at where they're at in 2016 of August. I stayed for 18 months and really started to get my life back together. But in that 18 months, I started to do things my way instead of God's way. And guess what? I relapsed again. And now I find myself back at where they're at and trying to find myself once again. I've learned if we don't apply the tools and biblical principles to our life daily, we will allow the devil to open doors as an addict. I'm one stupid mistake away from relapsing. So during my time here, I'm letting go and letting God totally clean me and starting from the inside out. I am a people pleaser, except when it came to my family. My wife always said I would do anything for anybody else, but would take everything from them. So this scripture is helping me on a daily basis. The scripture is helping me on a daily basis. It's easy to get caught up with externals and beware of those who emphasize actions we should or shouldn't do with no concern for the 
inward condition of the heart. Living a good life without an inward change leads to us, leads, mm, see what he says, uh, with no concern for the inward emotion of the heart. Living a good life without inward change doesn't lead to a spiritual walk. That shadow is empty. And what matters to God is that we be completely changed from the inside out. 2 Corinthians 5.17 if you can take anything away from my story, know this. As I added, we have a void in our heart, and the only thing that can be filled, be filled through in this void is God. For the remainder of my life, I am living for God, and I want everyone to know what and who I live for. So thank you for letting me share. Please keep me in your prayers, Landon. And then this is Matthew's. Addiction. It's something that's not good for you at all, but keeps needing and wanting you and it anyway. Romans 8, 5, and 9. Those who live according to sinful nature have their mindset on what the Spirit desires. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful, but the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you. To the mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins, your loved one is an addict and is addicted to drugs or alcohol. You are at the end of your road. You feel all hope is lost. You sometimes feel God abandoned you and turned a deaf ear to you and to your prayers. You literally watch your loved one slowly kill themselves daily. You're crying out for help. You can't sleep at night because you're up waiting on the dreaded phone call that knocks on your door. You, find, you now find yourself attending meetings to help you cope with your loved one's addictions. You're crying out for help because you feel all is lost. That's when God steps in with his never-ending love and your son or daughter comes to you crying with tears running down their cheeks, crying out for help. They are tired of living in darkness and want to desperately live in the light. They want to restore to their rightful place in their family and community. This is the story of the night that I made the choice and came to my parents to let go and let God take control of my life. I told my family that I wanted to be set free and never give up on me and never give up on your loved ones. Never stop praying and loving them. God breaks chains. He comes to set the captives free. He set Matt Dixon free. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And my Bible tells me a person has faith. They can move mountains. Just have the faith and your prayers will be answered. Just close your eyes, take a deep breath, and know God is in control. It's not over. And God is doing a work as we speak. It's going to be okay, people. And to the attic, I write this with a broken heart because I feel your hurt and I feel your pain. I feel your loss and your hopeless hopelessness. There is nothing nobody can say or do to make you feel more than you already do. You live like an animal daily, doing anything you can to please your addiction. You compromise your morals by lying, stealing, cheating from anyone that you can, even your loved ones. You feel like nobody understands what you're physically, emotionally, and mentally going through. Your life is out of control. You have a disease, a, prog a progress, incurable, fatal one. One way or another, we went out and bought our destruction on one time. time on one time paper, all of us from the junky snatching purses to the sweet old lady hitting two or three doctors for legal prescriptions have one thing in common. We seek our destruction a bag at a time, a few pills at a time, or a bottle at a time until we die. This is the least part of the insanity of addiction. The price may seem higher for the addict who's prostitutes for a fix and then it's far from the addict who merely lies to a doctor 
we are not perfect. We've made some bad choices to satisfy our addiction. If you want to be free, now is the time because we're not promised tomorrow. You are not alone, and I promise you that all you will you will not walk this journey alone. Jesus has a hand reached out for you. All you have to do is grab it and walk with him on the water. Watch him calm the storms in your life. God gives his children a free will, so I pray that you make the right decision and choose life. The best decision I ever made was to save my own life. Remember that your sins were paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ on that cross that day. He's already forgiven you. You've just got to forgive yourself. I love you, your son, Matt. Amen. And then this week, I just got to share this. Uh, he said, hey, Mom, Dad. Just wanted to write and tell you how much I love y'all. It's crazy how we take the littlest things for granted. Last week, last week, I look forward to seeing you guys every month. Or let, let me start over. It's crazy he writes like his daddy. It's crazy how we take the littlest things for granted. I look forward to seeing you guys every month. Being away from y'all makes me cherish the times we spent together. I'm praying that the Drug Awareness Day will be a great success. Just remember, if God is in it, and if only one person comes to change or comes to God, He will break free. He will be broken free from the addiction. And then God's will will have been done. Coming to where He's at was one of the greatest decisions and the best decisions I have ever made in my life. You forget the good things in life when you're an addict, like the love of your family, or just enjoying God's creation. I've enclosed three songs I have written and what they're about. I have hope, and I hope you like all these that I've sent to share with you. Can't wait to see y'all again soon. I love you, your son, Matt. And he has wrote these stories. I'm not going to read them, but it's amazing what God has given him. And one was when, when I was found. One he's entitled, the creator. And then the other one is my father. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to his father. Thank you. up here today than I will be tomorrow preaching because I'm not just standing as a pastor today, I'm standing as a father and uh, that, that puts a whole different light on the situation but I've tried to be the same at home as I have been at the church since I've been a pastor, I've I believe a double standard sends a very bad message to a child. Matter of fact, if we're living a double standard, that's really a hypocritical life. Amen. And I have failed many times in many areas with my wife and children. And sometimes you blame your, yourself. Uh, I, I kicked myself for years about how I felt like I had failed as a parent. Uh, and I blame myself for, for Matthew's behavior a lot. I don't anymore. But I, I used to say, well, if I'd have did this, hadn't have done that, if, uh, even as a Christian and as a pastor. But I, I will say this to you ministers that are here, and I'm just probably going to ramble. I just, I got a few notes, but uh, let me let me tell you something. It took me thirty something years to learn this, baby. But your family is more important 
to be one to the Lord as far as you're concerned than trying to win Lenore County. Amen. <coughs> Amen. I love Lenore County and the people, but when I moved here, my pledge to the church was anytime you need me, 3 o'clock in the morning, I, you call me, I'll be there. Come on. And I missed a bunch of ball games and a bunch of special occasions in my own children's life while trying to win the rest of the world to Christ. Come on. And a preacher's kid grows up and remembers. My daddy gave them all that time and then they, they turned around and backstabbed him. And he, he wasn't at my ball game, he wasn't at this. And I just say you young preachers, don't don't grow up with that that legacy. Don't uh, here's what here's what the order is. And some people will disagree with this, but it's God first in your life. Amen. And then a lot of people certainly would disagree with this. According to the Bible, then it's your spouse, Amen. your husband, or your wife.